Today, shifting the regulatory goalposts. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today, ASIC and APRA have both come out with further directives aimed at the banks to help them with the issue of loans that are not being serviced on time. And of course, this is a significant issue as COVID continues because the issues relating to people's inability to repay their loans is definitely running for longer. And this will have an impact on the banks, but of course, APRA's given them a leave pass for another few months. This is what APRA said. They've updated the temporary capital treatment given the continued economic uncertainty and to ensure an orderly transition of the portfolio while supporting borrowers. So APRA will extend its temporary capital treatment to provide ADIs with additional time to work with their affected customers through the COVID-19 period. Additionally, APRA will adjust the capital treatment of loans that are restructured to facilitate ADR's returning borrowers to a sustainable financial position. And they went on to say that APRA expects ADIs to proactively engage with affected borrowers between now and the end of the current deferment period to determine whether to grant an extension on the deferral period to restructure or to recognise a loan as impaired. ADIs should be encouraging borrowers that can restart repayments to do so and to identify, monitor and manage those loans where this is not possible. APRA will be engaging closely with ADIs on their credit risk management practices for effective loans. For loan repayment deferrals provided prior to the 30th of September 2020, ADIs may now continue to apply the temporary capital treatment to a further period of deferral until the earlier of either an aggregated period of deferral totaling 10 months or the 31st of March 2021. And for new loan repayments, deferrals that ADIs provide for the first time after the 30th of September 2020, the temporary capital treatment can be applied until the 31st of March 2021. Where ADIs are free to choose to extend repayment deferrals beyond these dates, they may not apply the temporary capital treatment after these dates, they said. And for repayment deferrals offered after the 30 September 2020, including extension to existing deferral arrangements, the temporary capital treatment may only be applied where the ADI has undertaken an appropriate credit assessment of the borrower and is satisfied that they have a reasonable prospect of being able to repay the loan on original or restructured terms when the repayment deferral period ends. In many cases, and dependent upon the circumstances of a customer, it may be more appropriate for an ADI to offer to modify or restructure the terms of a loan instead of further repayment deferral. To facilitate ADI's transitioning impacted borrowers to a regular repayment schedule, APRA is proposing to adjust temporarily the capital requirements so ADIs may restructure the borrower's facilities and return the borrower immediately to non-impaired status, provided that the restructure occurs on or before the 31st of March 2021. ADIs should ensure that they take a prudent approach to the assessment and management of loans with repayment deferrals at a high level APRA expects that ADIs will firstly develop a comprehensive plan for how they will manage the borrower assessment processes, including enhancements that need to be made to oversight, borrower review processes, customer engagement, capabilities and resourcing. This should be applied by the relevant accountable person and provided to APRA and the Australian Securities and Investments Commission by the end of August 2020. Next, conduct an appropriate credit assessment process to review borrowers' particular circumstances and determine the appropriate lending decision, which could be return to performing, restructure, extension or deferral period, or default and impairment. Next, monitor, manage and report on loans 
that have been restructured or granted a repayment deferral to ensure the risk of these loans is clearly understood and closely tracked at a portfolio and loan level. Ensure adequate policies, processes, resources and systems are in place to monitor arrears and for problem loan management during a period of heightened activity, including collection strategies, collateral management and hardship support. And reliably measure and record the impact of repayment deferrals on provisions and regulatory capital and consider the forward-looking implications for risk profile, capital projections and stress testing. And they make the point that AASB9 financial instruments expected loss provisioning continues to apply to ADIs, including for loans with repayment deferrals and restructured loans. ADI should continue to monitor borrowers closely and undertake regular credit risk assessments and on a best endeavours basis continue to grade and reparate borrowers through the period ahead. APRA, together with ASIC, will be engaging with ADIs on better practice in the credit assessment and management processes for the review of loans subject to COVID-related repayment deferral. For many ADIs, this will require an uplift in capabilities, processes and oversight to ensure that they are well positioned to manage the transition for this part of the credit portfolio. APRA will also be developing additional reporting obligations in relation to these exposures to monitor their volume and performance. In this uncertain environment, they said transparency is important to sustain investor and community confidence in the banking system. ADI's choosing to apply this alternative capital treatment will be required to, as well as report to APRA, provide public disclosures on the extent and the nature of loan granted repayment deferrals and information regarding loans that have been restructured. APRA will issue specific requirements on minimum expectations for these disclosures in the coming weeks. Repayment deferrals continue to be an important element of managing borrower circumstances through the COVID-19 period, and APRA will continue to engage regularly with ADI to stay informed on progress and risks, and to ensure that there is an appropriate transition back to borrowers making repayments where possible. In due course, APRA will formalise these capital measures and disclosure requirements through a temporary legislative instrument. And meanwhile, on the same day, ASIC also published guidelines in response to COVID-19. Lenders offered consumers the ability to defer repayments on their mortgage for a period of up to six months. A significant proportion of these repayment deferrals will be expiring over coming months. Lenders must do all things necessary to ensure that the credit activities authorised by their licence are engaged in effectively, honestly and fairly. As such, they said, we expect lenders to have processes in place that would allow for an orderly transition and importantly deliver consumer appropriate and fair outcomes. We consider that such processes would include the following. Lenders should make reasonable efforts to contact consumers prior to their repayment deferral expiring. This contact should be timely and allow for consumers to have reasonable time to consider their options. We continue to expect lenders to provide consumers with information that will assist their decision-making in accordance with their earlier expectations. In circumstances where a consumer does not respond to a communication, lenders should try to contact the consumer using a range of communication channels, and lenders should be able to evidence that they have made reasonable efforts to contact consumers. If a consumer identifies that they cannot resume full repayments on their mortgage, ASIC expects lenders to make reasonable efforts to interact with the consumer directly, for example, via a phone call, and they consider there's no conversation or other direct interaction with a consumer will allow lenders to gather more personalised information about the consumer's circumstances to make a decision about the consumer's loan in a fair and appropriate manner. In circumstances where a lender determines that it would be appropriate to offer further assistance to a consumer, lenders' processes should be flexible and empower staff to offer tailored assistance that genuinely addresses the needs of the consumer. Lenders should keep records which set out the assistance options they're providing to each individual consumer. 
And if a consumer is dissatisfied with the lender's response or actions, lenders must ensure that they comply with the requirements set out in ASIC Regulatory Guide 165 Internal and External Dispute Resolution. And they went on to say, importantly, in accordance with Section 72 of the National Credit Code, if a consumer notifies a lender that they will be unable to meet their repayment obligations after the expiry of a repayment deferral, and the lender makes a decision to not provide further assistance by way of varying the consumer credit contract, a consumer must be notified of their right to complain to the Australian Financial Complaints Authority. And in circumstances where a consumer's repayment deferral expires and they miss a repayment, lenders should make reasonable efforts to contact the consumer and assess the appropriateness of further assistance being offered to them. Lenders should have in place processes that are easy for consumers to understand and navigate. And while these expectations are focused on how lenders should manage the expiry of repayment deferrals on mortgages, they also expect lenders to consider these expectations more broadly when responding to consumers experiencing financial difficulties due to COVID-19 across other credit products and assistance arrangements. ASIC is closely monitoring how lenders are assisting consumers experiencing financial difficulties due to COVID-19. As part of our monitoring activities, they said, we have been meeting with a range of lenders, including ADIs and non-ADIs. Based on this engagement to help consumers make informed decisions, we think more can be done by lenders to provide consumers with personalised information or representative examples about how assistance arrangements may affect their repayments and the cost of their loan over the longer term. ASIC thinks this is important for lenders to consider in the context of providing consumers with further assistance at the expiry of a repayment deferral. And they said some lenders have raised queries with ASIC about how to approach situations where they identify that a consumer's financial difficulties are so severe that they will not be able to repay their loans over the longer term. ASIC expects lenders to make all reasonable efforts to work with consumers to keep them in their homes if that is their best interest. ASIC recognises that there will likely be some circumstances where offering a consumer further temporary assistance may make their situation worse. Such situations will need to be carefully identified by lenders and involve a high level of engagement with those affected consumers. Most lenders have informed ASIC that they are regularly reviewing and reassessing their approach to consumer engagement, for example, incorporating consumer feedback into consumer communications. And ASIC encourages all lenders to build continuous improvement into their processes. This will likely result in better consumer experiences and outcomes. And they continue to encourage all lenders to work closely with their customers to develop solutions that not, not only provide consumers with relief, but are sustainable and can assist consumers over the longer term. And finally, they said it also remains important that lenders continue to ensure that information about assistance is relevant, accessible, and available to all consumers. So standing back, as well as being given more latitude in terms of the capital situation and allowing loans to be extended for longer, both APRA and ASIC are definitely putting the acid on the banks to make sure that they engage with their customers appropriately and to provide good information so that consumers can make the best decisions. But of course the question is, when does the music stop? At what point is a bad loan really a bad loan? And will we now see a cliff at the end of March or will they kick the can on again if COVID still rages by then? The question is, at some point, bad loans have to come home to roost. And my question is, when will that be? I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.